So, dudes, yeah, I know the camera quality is not great. I am not in Texas right now. I am leaving Saturday. And by the end of next week, I should be back on my official schedule of Tuesday, Fridays with my actual setup installed. I'm going to have to do a bunch of uh, stuff with the sound treatment panels that I have. It just it's, it's a whole mess that takes several days worth of work. But all things considered, I should be good to go by the end of next week. Before I get into it, this video is sponsored by Ridge. If you aren't familiar with this company, they make lifestyle products that take everyday carry items that used to be really cumbersome and bulky and make them into something that's a lot easier, takes up less space in your pocket to carry around. In particular, I am a huge fan of their key cases. These function with a combination of a screw and a spring that goes in here. The screw comes out and there's a little metal piece you can see here in the middle that applies tension while this kind of sticks together and makes it a lot easier to carry in your front pocket. You can get them in different colors. They're made of high quality materials that last a lifetime as well. I've been running Ridge's products as dailies for a while now. If you're interested in this stuff, check out the link in the description. Go to ridge.com slash Gregor and use the promo code Gregor at checkout. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. All right, y'all, so the new patch finally dropped. And I didn't spend too much time talking about it in the last video, talking about the Tachanka change. If you want to see that, there's an info card on the top right corner of your screen. I want to focus specifically on sites. I want to, I want to focus specifically on Capkin losing the 1.5, Oryx losing the 1.5, and Wumai getting the 1.5 back. Now, if you guys remember the uh, one of the How to Play Every Operator videos I did, uh, I did do a gag about how the 1.5 on the MP5K made Mute a pretty solid, like, off-pick roamer because that weapon doesn't have a ton of recoil. The rate of fire is high enough. It's it's a typical laser beam that doesn't do a ton of body shot damage, but you can certainly fry people. Uh, the sa same is true with the T5. And honestly, the 9x19 kind of applies in that category. A any kind of high-ish rate of fire weapon that doesn't have a lot of recoil is really going to benefit from using this weapon site. I think any weapon in Siege, really is going to benefit from using this weapon site. In fact, the 1.5 is so good that whenever it is available, I very rarely don't use it. Uh, even if there's an option for it two times, when I'm on defense, I will forego the two times in favor of the 1.5. Why is this? And why, <laughs> why did the scope ever get added? Because it seems to be a balancing hot potato that is... That has caused a great deal of stress, both for Ubisoft and for Rainbow Six Siege Twitter, which of course is real life. From a Koros thumbnail, as you can see here, the average pick distance in Rainbow Six Siege is about the size of a passenger bus, so about 8 meters. Obviously, a mid-range scope is going to cover the vast majority of engagements that you take in Rainbow Six Siege. It's not going to cover... All the engagements, there may be some engagements very up close where a hollow site might be better, some engagements from far away where a two times might be better, but on average, you were going to get the most out of mileage out of a 1.5 scope. Some people call it the 1.5 crutch. I'm a 1.5 crutch and I don't care. It has a very precise sight picture and it doesn't zoom in so much that your peripheral is blocked and you lose your situational awareness, but it does kind of help you get that, it does, it does kind of help you get that little little bit of precision that you need for a headshot in Siege, which is obviously very important. It's kind of funny how OP the ACOG used to be considered, where now it seems like you're kind of throwing if you use this thing at all anymore. I don't think you're throwing if you use the ACOG. I still think there are some situations where the ACOG can be useful, but really that's only going to apply to attackers. The highest zoom scope, excluding the boss G for Vigil, is the two times, and that's only available on the MP5 for Rook and semi-auto weapons in the form of the TCSG for Goyo and Kaed. Now this brings us back to the scopes themselves. Why does Ubisoft feel like it's necessary to do this in terms of a balancing decision? Well, according to their own metrics, apparently scopes do have an influence on the effectiveness, if you want to call it that, the kill conversion rates of these particular operators. And I do think that makes sense. I, I think that at a competitive level, yes, there are a million other factors that go into playing the game from a strategic and a tactical point of view. Siege is a gadget and destruction-based kind of game when you boil it down. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about ranked and you're talking about pub stomping, yeah, attachments and weapon feel and gunplay feel certainly do play a part 
in terms of how comfortable you are going into engagements. And there's a certain kind of psychology that definitely does dictate whether or not you're going to win or lose a gunfight. If you're more confident going into your gunfight than not, you're going to have a higher chance of winning it. I think these kinds of questions are dependent on the FPS game that you are playing. And in the context of a game like Siege, where a lot of it is done indoors, and a lot of the engagements are relatively close compared to other FPS games, yeah, close range and slightly zoomed optics are just going to be the more viable option most of the time. If you played any kind of Battle Royale game, for instance, you know that scopes are prized. They are very high up on the food chain in terms of, in terms of the uh, priority list, in terms of looting. But it's also nice to be flexible and have a weapon that's good for close range engagements. One of these examples in terms of why, you know, high zoom scopes aren't always going to be the best idea uh, is Cali and Glaz, right? These operators have a very specific job that entails holding an angle from really far away, but as soon as it gets into actually, like, pushing a sight, right, as soon as you need to get aggressive with them, suddenly they become a lot less effective. That's why Cali has a machine pistol. But I also do think that scopes are prioritized just a little bit too high in terms of using them as an operator balancing metric. Wamai being a great example of a character where it was like, okay, you know, we decided that this guy could compete with Jaeger a little bit too much with this weapon sight, so we took away the 1.5, then we buffed the MP5K by adding the extended barrel, then that option suddenly became a lot more competitive with his AUG assault rifle, and now we're giving him the 1.5 back. Then we had Alibi, who lost the 1.5, got the 1.5 back, and I'm going to be honest with you, I forget if she, I, I believe she still has it. Yes. And then they and then they nerfed the recoil on that particular weapon. A lot of this stuff is iterative and a lot of this stuff is data driven. Data changes based off of the context of the game's balancing. And Ubisoft is constantly adjusting things on the fly. So it might look like Ubisoft doesn't really have their priorities straight if you look at these instances in a vacuum. But I think they have been doing a better job of this lately. Now. I'm not going to lie, I do think that the Capkin change for the 1.5 is a little bit strange when you compare him to Azami. Azami is definitely the better character, so by this logic, it would imply that Capkin, you know, was competitive enough to lose a 1.5 when you compared bringing him compared to Azami, which is a little bit strange. And Oryx doesn't really have any utility. His whole kit was based around being able to run around and take gunfights effectively. So the argument there, of course, is that the T5 is still a very solid weapon, and it'll mitigate some of his fragging power just a little bit. Maybe he was too good of a fragger. But sometimes I wonder, you know, if you have, a, if you have an operator that is just solely based around fragging, does that make them a good operator in the context of Siege? Well, not 100% of the time. A lot of the time, you need utility, and a fragging operator is something that you should omit in terms of your uh, prioritization for your operator lineup. It's a controversial talking point within the context of Siege Balancing. I personally think that Ubisoft would have saved themselves a lot of grief by just never adding 1.5 at all. But I also think that does take away some options for players and it makes certain play styles a little bit less fun. I particularly can enjoy playing Castle with the UMP even though that weapon isn't particularly great. The 1.5 does reward my mechanical skill in terms of placing headshots. So it is very context based and... I, I do think that there is a discussion to be had about how many operators should have the 1.5 at all. Is it something that should really only be relegated to weapons like the UMP-45 where they need that ability for skill input? Should operators like Oryx ever have gotten a 1.5 in the first place because that weapon is so much easier to use compared to the T5? Uh, let me know what you guys think about this particular uh, topic in the comments down below. I'm really curious to see what you guys have to say about scope balancing, whether or not it's important to you, whether it's not important to you, and I'll see you guys in the next siege balancing video. Take care, and thanks for watching. Deuces.